Hello folks, Zemo's99 here doing a retro review of the iPod Nano 5th generation, arguably Apple's best iPod Nano to date. It's unfortunate that it's an arguable point, considering that it's blindingly clear that this is the best iPod Nano Apple has ever produced. The iPod Nano 5th generation was released on September 9th, 2009, the same day that Apple unveiled the iPhone 3GS. The iPod Nano 5th generation introduced a slew of improvements from the predecessor, the iPod Nano 4th generation. Uh, one of the most notable being the larger display. This is a 2.2 inch display instead of a 2 inch display that was on uh, the iPod Nano 4th generation. Not too significant, but it did provide a quite substantial increase in um, viewing area for the display. They also modified the build by uh, making the iPod Nano out of anodized aluminum instead of the dull aluminum that was um, on the previous generation. It looks nice, it's shiny, reflective, it came in I believe eight colors, and it's very visually pleasing, even to this day, it's a very nice looking um, device, uh, period. Additionally, a speaker was added, rendering it the only iPod Nano with a speaker to date. Uh, the iPod Nano 7th generation does not have a speaker. Uh, and also, perhaps the most notable um, inclusion was a video camera. Uh, this had the ability to take 480p video at 30 frames per second, uh, and it had a microphone to boot, so it, ha it was a fairly handy video recorder. It doesn't take photos, oddly enough, um, but it was a fairly decent video camera. It lacked high definition, which was a bit of a letdown, I, I suppose, but I mean, it's such a thin and sleek device that it was rather uh, permissible. I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal. It almost definitely was the best video camera on an MP3 player. I mean, no question about that. The click wheel is the only thing that may suggest that this is an antiquated device because the feel in the hand is very good, uh, solid if not premium. Now before I delve into the software, I'd like to tell you how I managed to obtain this iPod Nano. So the day was March 20th, 2010. Uh, my my 11th birthday was two days before. I was looking to spend my birthday money on something, and my attention shifted toward music, a music player, an MP3 player, because I had a, a library, but I didn't have a device to portably listen to music with. Uh, so. I eventually narrowed it down to two devices. Coincidentally, both of them were Apple devices, a big surprise. Uh, it was between the iPod Nano 5th generation and the iPod Touch 2nd generation. Now at the time, the iPod Touch 3rd generation was in fact a, an item, it was a thing, but it was only available for the higher capacity models, so the 32 and 64 gigabyte wait, was it 32 and 64? Or 16 and 32, I'm not entirely sure, but the... <laughs> The lower tier 8GB model was only the second generation, uh, which had an outdated CPU and I believe less RAM. Uh, so I was faced between getting a lower tier iPod Touch or the most recent generation of iPod Nano. I didn't like the idea of having an outdated um, iPod Touch from the get-go, I mean it was still the most recent 8GB iPod Touch you could possibly get. but. It would become rather outdated, I, well this was my thought process in about a couple of years or so because I knew how iOS updates worked, although I didn't know the intricacies of it. I knew that as devices grew older, they received, they stopped receiving iOS updates. So I had $200 and I decided to just uh, save $50 and get the 8GB iPod Nano for generation because at the time my music library, or in quotations because it wasn't necessarily a gigantic library. Uh, just to put this into perspective, now I have 146 gigabytes of music in my music library. Then I only had 6 gigabytes of music in my music library. So the 8 gigabyte uh, configuration satisfied me because I didn't imagine myself adding more music into my library and if I were then at worst I could always switch them out. To Apple's credit though, they made the 16 gigabyte iPod Nano more accessible because uh, the 8 gigabyte Nano was 150 and the 16 gig Nano was 180, which was, I mean, quite remarkable for Apple as they used to um, bolster the price of <laughs> the higher capacity models by a wide margin. So the fifth generation iPod Nano was my first Apple device of any sort. And the reason that I uh, preferred it over the iPod Touch second generation, or the reasons uh, rather, were because of the fact that the iPod Touch second generation was the last generation iPod Touch model. 
um, I believe that the video camera was quite a significant reason for me too. I just I liked the fact that this had a video camera. I mean, as mediocre as it were, I mean, I didn't mind. 480p was sufficient enough back then uh, for an 11 year old, and for 2009, that was it wasn't the end of the world. And uh, it came with effects too, which I thought were pretty. I I, I was wowed by that. It's comical how nowadays you can just get an iOS app that has a bunch of free uh, selected video effects for you to choose from. But back then, I mean, for me, I really liked that. Uh, so the video camera and the radio, because this had a radio in it, and I liked the live pause feature because I used to listen to radio quite frequently back in the day. Now I never do, but that's because I actually have a, <laughs> a good taste in music now. <laughs> the iPod Nano 5th generation's display isn't sharp by any means, but at least uh, the display's contrast and vibrancy is pretty good. Uh, so overall, it's an okay display. It's average. Uh, the resolution is 376 by 240 and it's a 2.2 inch TFT LCD panel, I believe. I'm not 100% sure, but who cares? It's an old device. It's retro view. It doesn't matter. <laughs> but it's definitely an okay display, especially in the pre-retina display days. Uh, so I have, let's see how many songs I have. I have 120 megabytes free. It gives you about 7.1 gigabytes free out of 8 gigabytes. Um, how many songs do I have? I have 960 songs on this. And I have 120 megabytes free. Now, if you know me, <laughs> I hate it when people say, if you know me, you know um, I'm a bit of an audiophile. So all of my music uh, on my portable devices are in lossless audio. But with this 8 gigabyte nano, I'd only be able to put maybe 200 songs in lossless, and that's not enough. Um, so I had to use the iTunes option to down um, to down convert all Apple lossless audio to 256 kilobits per second. AAC, uh, which isn't the end of the world. I mean, it's listenable. Uh, there is a slight uh, difference, practically indiscernible, but so that's what I did. And if I were to choose a, a lossy encoder, I'd use AAC over MP3 any day, even if it's a lower bit rate than the MP3 uh, audio. So I didn't mind that much. But I, I can only fit 960 songs on here, which, yeah, it's uh, a bit disappointing. But back then, I mean, I only had about 900 songs in my library, so it wasn't a big deal for me. Back then, my library was a mix of 256 and 320 kilobits per second, AAC and MP3. Ugh, that was a mess. <laughs> so here are the music options. Uh, you had genius mixes. You had playlists, artists, album songs, you know, everything. Composers, audiobooks. You could search as well. It wasn't that intuitive, but <laughs> you could. I mean, yeah, this definitely wasn't ideal. Uh, and then we had cover flow, too. So if I rotate this to the side you'd see that, yeah, cover flow. Uh, let's do it over to this side, it's more convenient. There we go. I don't know why this album art's like this. Uh, this isn't the album art for the album, it just, I don't, this is an iTunes error, I believe, maybe a disc reading error, I'm not, I'm not that sure. Uh, but yeah, all the other album art covers seem to be good. Uh, yeah, okay, so yeah, we had um, cover flow. I mean, this looks a bit ugly, to be honest. I mean, the white background is kind of off-putting. I mean, it looks a bit archaic, but I mean, this is 2009 software, so I mean, yeah. You can still listen to music, though, and I guess that's the most important thing. Here's a now playing screen. I love this quick wheel. It is so intuitive. And I've been using it for years on end, so it's pretty much second nature to me now. If you want to um, skip to a certain portion of the song, you can just single-click the um, middle button, <laughs> whatever it's called and then go to any portion by just rotating the scroll wheel. Skipping songs was as simple as just pressing the back and forward buttons. <laughs> Videos. I used to rip documentaries available on YouTube, transfer them to iTunes, and then sync them to my iPod Nano, and then I'd watch them on car trips or when I'm out and about, or sometimes even at home in my living room. <laughs> it was it was odd, but it worked. I mean, this display is a bit diminutive, but I mean, it's it worked for me back then. I mean, <laughs> That's what I did. Uh, then photos, I didn't sync any photos to this. Um, I mean, photo viewer, that's ridiculous. Watching videos on this? Yeah, sure, but photos, pah. Five, five or six years ago, I didn't listen to podcasts, so I didn't use that section. Then we had radio. If we plugged in um, headphones, which would act as a receiver, we could listen to radio and pause it in real time, which was something. And now the video camera, Ooh. Now, the, the thing about the, uh, the video camera, the placement, it's just uh, so odd. Holding it this way wouldn't work because then you'd be blocking the lens. So the only way would be holding it this way. Yeah. 
holding it this way. So, hmm. Yeah, the dis I don't know what Mapple was thinking, but I mean, at least they managed to tack one on there. But it seems like a bit of an afterthought. I don't, I don't know. It worked though. So here's the interface. Um, video quality was good. I mean, it's just standard definition video. So just imagine that. Uh, to start recording, you just press the middle button, or for effects, you'd hold it, and then here are all the effects. You have normal, x-ray, sepia, black and white, and wait, there's more. If you scroll, then we have thermal, cyborg, film grain, security cam. Let's do thermal. And yeah, there you go. It, it's cool, though. The effects were pretty cool, if not a bit gimmicky, but still. It, I mean, that's kind of cool. I mean, that definitely entertained an 11-year-old, which was me in that case. Cyborg. This was probably my favorite. Um, yeah. I remember making, like, mini spy films and pretending I was um, some sort of director. Of, this is film grain, which emulates maybe 20s silent films. Uh... Security cam is also a good one. And then there were the outrageous loopy ones like Kaleidoscope. Ah, oh, jeez, I remember screwing around with this one. Ugh, so trippy. <laughs> then you had Bulge, which was the fatify for iPod Nano. <laughs> and this led to hours of entertainment. Uh, video camera, nice inclusion. I, it probably sold me on it. Had it not been for the video camera, I may have went for the iPod to second generation. Ah, oh, what would happen if that were the case? If I just went for the iPod Touch. I don't know. But I'm glad I did end up purchasing this because I ended up loving it to pieces. And that's why I still have it. I mean, it's still with me. I mean, granted, I haven't been using it for the past year or so. But yesterday, I just dug it out of my uh, drawer and then uh, just synced my more updated music collection to it or whatever I could fit onto it. And then that then went on from there. Then I had the brilliant idea to make this video. If we go into extras, you have all of these extras, which I suppose some are helpful, like fitness. There's a pedometer on here, which I used occasionally just for the sake of it, not to actually monitor my steps, but, well, that's precisely what I used it for, but I didn't use it for any health-related purposes. Um, yeah, I don't know if I can sort of replicate the results if I do this. No. Oh, it's a smart pedometer, huh? Yeah, then it'd be always on if that's in the is that a status bar? I don't, I'll call it that. Yeah, so it's tracking my steps at this very moment, which should stay at a solid zero. There were games on this too. Uh, oh no, I'm bad at this. Let's let's play one, I guess. Maze. I think this was my favorite one. I did actually play these games occasionally because they didn't have a smartphone or anything, so this was what I did. Center, okay. Yeah, so use the accelerometer in here to move it. Um, okay, I'm obviously not doing well. But yeah, that was <laughs> those are the games. Save and exit. And you could sync notes onto this, which I thought was a bit stupid, but you could do that. Nobody ever used it, though, and that's why I guess they removed it for, uh, from the iPod Nano. The iPod Nano 6th generation, though, that was such a regression, in my opinion. They removed practically everything that made this a solid, uh, the worthwhile purchase. Uh, and they just added a tiny touchscreen. Yeah, I still send. This is the best iPod Nano ever produced, even outperforming the iPod Nano seventh generation, which is essentially a small iPod to fourth generation without applications. Uh, but it didn't have the camera. It doesn't have a built-in speaker. I mean, it's just yeah. This is probably if you can find this for under a hundred dollars at the sixteen gigabyte one, because let's face it, eight gigabytes is not enough for anybody, but sixteen gigabyte one you could probably fit a couple thousand songs in two fifty six kilobits per second AAC. Uh, if you can find one of those for under hundred, I'd say go for it. Uh, it's a nice it's still a nice uh, MP3 player, media player. Now for audio files, the audio output um, is rather mediocre I'd say. Uh, my iPod Touch bests it. My iPod Touch 5th generation. Oh, my iPod Touch 4th generation is a better audio output than this is. It, yeah, the audio output isn't great, but most people don't care about that. Uh, but for me, when I was listening to music from this yesterday, it was a bit disappointing. Uh, just overall, the audio is slightly garbled. This isn't due to the lower bitrate that these uh, files are, uh, because I did try it with ALAC. 
uh, and the results were practically identical because, of course, uh, it's audio is transparent past, I'd say, 256 for me. Now, iPods were never known for their fantastic audio output, but recent generations of iOS devices have had very good audio output. Like, the iPhone 6 is a fantastic audio output device, probably one of the best on a, on a mobile phone. But this one, yeah, just pales in comparison. Uh, I'd be willing to say that some people may not notice a difference, but for me, it's definitely... It's definitely a telling difference. And because of that, I probably couldn't listen to music for an extended period of time uh, from the iPod Nano, just because the audio output is r pretty off-putting. Uh, keep in mind, five years ago, I didn't care, nor did I know any better, because this was the only portable um, audio output device that I had, so I didn't really know any better. But now it's easy to tell the difference. Because Apple is selling the seventh generation Nano for $150, so if you can find this for less or even the same price as the 7th generation, I'd probably go for the 5th generation. Just for the fact that, I mean, the build quality, is, in my opinion, is better. Uh, just the fact that it has a video camera, although this is a bit of a novelty. It has a speaker. Overall, I prefer the intuitive interface of the click wheel. Perhaps I'm just a traditionalist, but that's what I prefer for a music player. I just, I'd prefer this over the 7th generation, and that's why I believe it's the best iPod Nano ever made. The only area in which the 7th generation Nano probably has the advantage over the 5th generation Nano is with audio quality, but that is indiscernible for most people. Most people probably could not tell the difference. For audiophile stuff, yeah, it may be worth the investment in the 7th generation Nano for the fact that the audio output is almost definitely better than this one, although granted I ha I've never um, listened to audio um, coming out of the 7th generation Nano, so one can only assume. Oh, 30 pin connector, all oh, the good days. Yeah, but there we go. And the colors were great too. Like, I remember going to the store and looking at the different colors. They were all fantastic. I was debating between the red, the blue, and the green, of course, three rather popular colors among people. But I ultimately decided on the green. Just, I liked how this one looked. And yeah, wow. Why did I have to grow up? <laughs> oh, wow. Now, to end on that rather somber and disturbing note. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you stuck until the end, um, why? <laughs> but thank you for watching. I make videos on things that interest me, conventionally technology-related stuff. Um, and if you liked the video, be sure to give the video a thumbs up. Um, thanks. <laughs> and, yeah, later. Bye. <laughs>